Good evening and welcome to the Cabinet meeting on Thursday the 25th of January of Tamworth Borough Council. First item, apologies for absence, I believe we've got full house. Um, item two, minutes of the previous meeting, are they a true record? Can I have a move and a second then? All those in favour? Thank you, I'll sign those after the meeting. Uh, item three, any declarations of interest? Councillor Oates. Yes, I'm Mr Chairman, declare a non-pecuniary but prejudicial interest in agenda item 11 due to my membership of Staffordshire County Council. Thank you, and uh, thank you for reminding me, me too. And, me. and uh, Councillor Clements as well. Thank you. Um, question time, there are no questions from the public today. So that moves on to the first main item, item number five, Matters referred to the Cabinet in accordance with the overview and scrutiny procedure rules. And I'd like to call the Chair of Corporate Scrutiny, Councillor Danny Cook, forward, please, to present his report. Uh, thank you, Mr Chairman. Uh, obviously, the report is in front of you in the papers you've been uh, dealt with this evening. Um, obviously, uh, the purpose of it is to notify Cabinet of the recommendations of the Housing Repairs Working Group, which is a working group of corporate scrutiny. Um, there are three recommendations that I'll start there uh, from the uh, working group of November last year, which obviously was confirmed by the full corporate scrutiny committee in December. Uh, the first one is to add additional resource, and we don't necessarily mean another member of staff, it's just to you know, better allocate resource, uh, to the TBC repairs team where an MLDINS code is inputted for a property and a manual look back at the history of repairs for that property be conducted to identify if damp and or mould has been a previous issue at the property or for the tenant at the previous property. Number two, that damp and mould inspection process become a fuller part of the repairs policy, because I think it sits separately at the minute. And number three, to ensure that vulnerable residents are prioritised where there are damp and mould issues within the home. Obviously, I don't sit here this evening with an identification of what we mean by vulnerable. It obviously takes some work from the portfolio and the officers to identify. Obviously, we carry that data to make sure they're absolutely prioritised when there's a damp and mould issue. Uh, what we found uh, actually across the three scrutiny committees this year there is a little bit of a passion towards damp and mold we have had some historic issues in our council housing around damp and mold and we feel at the minute we're not quite as robust as we potentially could be that's not to belittle the officers or say they're not doing a good job i think they're doing the absolute best to um, deal with the issues i just think if we're more robust with our policies and look to do what the recommendations are stated this evening maybe we can get on top of the issues a little bit quicker Obviously, we know damp and mould is a health issue, um, obviously affects quality of life. And I think what the three scrutiny committees, while it has come through corporate, the three scrutiny committees have been quite passionate about this this year to obviously try where we can to improve our process. Those are the three recommendations that came through the working group. Happy to take questions, even though I wasn't present at that working group, but I'll do my best. Uh, it's just basically to say, uh, if uh, the portfolio wants to go further, uh, we would welcome it as well. Um, happy to take any questions, Mr Chairman. Thank you very much for the report. Um, do you have any comments or questions, Councillor Smith? Yeah, thank you for um, uh, the working group and those recommendations, Councillor Cook. Um, I, I have read through them. Um, they all seem um, absolutely uh, critical, and uh, I would I would support them, uh, all three of them, just to confirm. Uh, one thing I would say is there's a consultation, I believe, um, on the uh, OWAB's law. Um, going on at the moment and these recommendations to some extent um, have to align themselves with that and, and the general housing regs that are going through at the moment so we do we do have to be wary of that um, but all of these are very reasonable in my view um, I think we do need to get a little bit more specific on the third one in terms of the mechanisms behind that and what we regard as a priority so that probably needs a bit more attention but absolutely um this is this is great so uh, i will be supporting it thank you thank you yeah i'd like to say um i agree with that i think on the third one there there are some um sort of standard criteria out there if you're you know a gas company or something that you go out to priority if they've got small children people of a certain ages so there's already something existing there um and i'm presuming i'll ask you, you councillor smith 
Is there no operational issue to any of this that's been highlighted by like making a change like this? Yeah, I don't see um, anything particularly uh, coming out of the woodwork in terms of the current operations. Um, but we just have to understand what is currently uh, the case. And uh, like you said, um, it might just be a reallocation slightly uh, on, on some of those. And uh, just to make the practices and make the, the workings better. Uh, clearly, as I said, we have to make sure that we abide by these regulations that are coming in now. So uh, we'll do absolutely everything we can to, uh, to make sure that happens. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? No, um, I'll be supporting as well. Can I have a move and a seconder? You'd like to move? Seconded. All those in favour? Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Cook. Uh, thank you, Mr Chairman. And on behalf of the three scrutiny committees, can we thank you for that attention? Thank you. Thank you. That takes us on to the next item, which is draft budget and medium term financial strategy 2024-2025. Um, which is my report, um, it's here tonight to approve the draft medium-term financial strategy as in the appendices, um, to consult with the Joint Scrutiny Committee for Budgets on the 31st of January and receive their feedback on four key areas, general fund revenue budget and council tax, housing revenue account budget, capital programme and uh, medium-term financial strategy. So the recommendations are it's recommended that Cabinet, one, approve the draft package of budget proposals, including the medium-term financial strategy, and two, as required by the Constitution of the Council, the Joint Scrutiny Committee for Budgets on the 31st of January 2024 be requested formally to consider the budget proposals contained within this report. Um, I think we've all had a good opportunity, several opportunities to go through this, um, so I can't imagine there'll be much comment tonight, but I will open up to the floor. Okay, um, can I have a move and a seconder? Moved, seconded, all those in favour? Brilliant, thank you very much. Next item on the agenda, quarter two performance report. Um, again, recommended that we endorse the content of the report, basically. Um, this time, thank you very much, there is the rundown of the corporate scrutiny discussion log so that shows us what other councils have been um, questioning um, and answers that have been given which all seem reasonable to me um, so do we have any questions or comments no. I just want to thank um, Tracy and the team for having this added this time because it was a request last time so thank you it's good to see have a move and a seconder yep all those in favor Great, thank you very much. Next on the agenda, business rates income forecast 24-25, uh, again to underpin the, the budget work, um, and it's seeking endorsement tonight on the forecast for the next year. Um, again, I will propose, I'm not proposing we go through it in detail, we've seen it before, and it underpins the budget. Do you have any questions or comments? Move in a seconder. Move, seconded. All those in favour? Thank you very much. Next, we have annual residence survey results, and I'll hand over to the portfolio holder for Civic Pride and Engagement, Councillor Clements. Thank you, Leader. Uh, my first report coming through Cabinet. Um, firstly, I just want to say thank you to uh, Tanya and the team for the hard work in getting this data ready for this evening's meeting. And obviously the purpose is to share the results of the annual survey and budget consultation um, to inform the decision-making process around council budget and priorities. Um, just to pull out some highlights, because you've all got the report in front of you, um, 737 people did the survey. Um, and whilst that's not a huge figure compared to how many people live in Tamworth, it's on par with last year, so it's not dropped. Um, so all in all, a good figure. I just want to uh, try and get to how we can get to more people with doing the work that we're already doing. Um, and it's interesting that residents agree with our priorities and these are the same as 2022. Um, it's also interesting to see that residents on a whole um, 
use social media as the top choice for finding out about council services. Over the last year, um, 95,000 contacts uh, were made digital and only 333 were face to face. So if we all listen to the social media, whatever you want to call it, um, that is, is, a, is a, a figure that defends what we're, what we're trying to do. Um, we just need to make sure that those three, 333 are having the, the, what they need. Um, obviously, there's um, interesting comments around sports and ledger, uh, again, which I won't read out because you've all got it in front of you. And the pleasing result is that the council priorities are highlighted in the responses by residents and most of them are now in progress. Um, so I don't know whether Tanya wants to say any more. So I'm happy to move that report and call for a second. Thank you very much for that. Um, I've got a couple of comments and questions. Happy to go first. Everyone's happy with that. Um, so firstly, I mean, it's good to see because we're seeing this now towards the end of the budget process. The budget process was kicked off way before this. Um, actually, when you look at the top three, the way we've got the appetite for more spending, we're about to present pretty much just that. There is more spending in those areas. Um, there are some areas where people believe uh, there's an appetite to reduce spending. One of them is obviously it's, it's, it's through legislation. We, we can't um, not do the, the clap, tackling climate change. Um, and then, you know, arts, assembly rooms, events, support, support to local businesses. If, you know, if, if that question, some of those should perhaps potentially in future years be split out. I will talk about this the other day. Sometimes people see arts and events as, as being different. Um, but actually, though, I'm satisfied that those items are actually serve to, to grow Tamworth and grow business in Tamworth and uh, improve as a, as a location for people to visit. So it's good that we are ticking off most things that people um, are wanting. Um, it then goes down, it's uh, referring back to 2022, um, we're reviewing fees, big tick there, um, lower increase in council tax, we're not increasing by the maximum, so you know, we, we are doing what people are generally saying that we should, um, which is obviously very pleasing. One question I did have, in the Tamworth as a place to live, where you, in quite a few of these where you've got the percentages, it would be good to know whether it's gone up and down from the previous, previous year. So, for example, 68% um, satisfied with Tamworth as a place to live. Has that gone up or down? 67% feel safe. Has that gone up or down? Are you going to tell me it's deep in the appendices now? But um, I think it would be good, uh, just in brackets, to have it up, up front. Just use the mics for recording. Thanks. So, in terms of the sixty-seven percent feeling safe during the day, that is an increase on previous years. Um, so, I'm just quickly looking for the previous year's data on that one. Um, so, in the day, it was sixty-four percent. So, sixty-four percent to sixty-seven percent is quite a good increase. Um, and then, in terms of the time of as a place to live. Let me just try to find that bit of data. Apologies. It's broadly similar. Um, so so it's 52% for 2023 and it was 57% for 2022. But then when you add on those people that don't have a strong view, um, it takes them to broadly similar figures from previous years. But I, next next time I will be putting that data in for you Thank so you easily see on that high, high level. Thank you. So, I mean, it's good we've got the, the feedback, but it's, it's a really good news story in my opinion. You know, it's basically uh, the people of Tamil are demonstrating that they're happy. Conservative administration digging all these boxes. That's what it's saying to me. Um, any questions or comments? Smith. Yeah, I was just going to say, uh, yeah, very good uh, report. So thank you to everybody involved. Um, it's nice to see that there is, you know, a majority that do feel safe. So, um, you know, obviously, if we can improve that, that that's great. 
Um, I would say I totally agree about the um, the arts assembly rooms and events. I think people's perception of arts can be quite a bit different to to events. So I would suggest separating that out. And uh, I would say that um, the goal um, as part of this next year would be to increase the amount of respondents. Uh, so it'd be interesting to to work out ways of, of doing that. So we have uh, more, I guess, more and more data. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Cooper. Thank you, thank you, Chair. Um, so yeah I, yeah, I was just going to pick up on the arts and events um, thing. Um, so I, th I think what we probably need to do as a council is, is probably do a little bit more um, informing and educating around arts and events and why we do arts and events. So for me, one of the reasons why we do arts and events is to um, obviously bring people to the fantastic town that is Tamworth, but also there's that secondary benefit of the businesses in the town centre and around the town centre that are receiving the benefit of that that event being put on you know when the um it's no surprise to me that on a, a cold wet um november night when the fireworks are on um you know we, yes we you know it's a popular event we're giving people the ability to go to a professional uh, professionally organized fireworks event in the town center but also you try and find yourself um, a seat at one of the restaurants after you try and find yourself a um, you know a, a spot at the bar um, even Tamworth's premier nightclub uh, Belgrave Club uh, is busier during the fire the fireworks events because of the, the amount of people coming into the town and it's that secondary benefit so I absolutely understand why people do have uh, uh, you know takes a small issue with it let's say a small issue but I think if we explain to people why we do it and and, and the reason we be behind doing that I think that could lead to a few people changing their mind I know I've spoke to people and they they've, they've changed their mind when I've explained it to them about the secondary benefit of putting on hosting events and maybe it's um, just through our communications online and social media okay we're, we're doing this event um, it'll be great to see, um, you know, the, the amount of people in Tam uh, coming into Tamworth uh, spiked, but also um, local businesses um, getting that positive um, sort of um, um, input from from different different people coming into the town. Thank you very much. Um, and then one thing I forgot to mention earlier: if you go to the the page where it's got the common theme and then the bullets, I mean, if anyone's watching online, read those bullets. We, we sometimes speak to people on the doorsteps and we'll talk through certain things. We might talk about the investment in the town centre, we'll talk about the Christmas event, etc. And they often say, well, sometimes they'll say, well, I don't go there, so what, what are you doing for me? Read that list. There is something, but li literally everyone is, is having something that's benefiting them that we're working on um, in one way or another. There's 28 actions on there and that's, like, that's, that's kind of like top of the head thinking on, and what we're doing that people have already raised, uh, which is a, a fantastic position to be in. Um, do we have any other comments or questions, Councillor Cooper? All whilst delivering a very good uh, budget as well, uh, Mr. Leader. I think I think it has to be said. So we're delivering benefits, all, all with a very good budget as well. We're uh, you know we're not experiencing some of the issues that some other local councils are experiencing. So I think it's really good. That's it. If anyone reads this, think this is good. Tune in on the twenty seventh of February when we go through the budget. Um, so I think it's really good. Thank you very much. Um, do I have a mover and a second? Moved. Seconded. All those in favour? Great. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Clements. Right, moving back. Okay. So that moves on to the section where it's uh, commercially sensitive, so we need to consider excluding the present public from the meeting by passing the following resolution that in accordance with the provisions of the local authorities' executive arrangements, meeting and access to information, England Regulations 2012, and Section 100A4 of the Local Government Act 1972, the press and public be excluded from the meeting during the consideration of the following business on the grounds that it involves the likely disclosure of exempt information as defined in Paragraph 3 of Part 1 of Schedule 12A to the Act and the public interest in withholding information outweighs the public interest in disclosing the information to the public. At the time this agenda is published, no representations. Okay, so we do have a, a fire drill this evening. So um, we'll stop there for a moment.